And welcome back, guys, to Cheddar News. I'm Baker Machado in New York. And in a sensational mix of poetry and music, the new documentary, New Worlds, The Cradle of Civilization, transports viewers to a summer night in Greece, all chronicling the final performance of their European New Worlds tour. This documentary showcases an incredible international quartet, including world-renowned cellist Jan Vogler, accompanied by the one and only Bill Murray. Take a look at this. This is the moment in the show where people usually look at one another and say, is it too late to get some moussaka somewhere? This isn't quite what we were hoping for. And I understand completely, we all do. This stuff is, it's junk what we're doing. It's not good. If you wanna go, completely understand. I love it. And Bill Murray and world-renowned cellist Jan Vogler join us now. Gentlemen, such a pleasure to have you here. Welcome to Cheddar News. Thanks, Baker. Hi, uh, nice to meet you, Baker. Great to have you guys here. Bill, I want to start with you. Uh, you and Jan first debuted your material of your New Worlds album all the way back in 2017. Then the official album arrived that September. What has been your experience like leading up to this documentary? I can only imagine. It's been a... Uh... It's been a, a spinning wheel. It's been beautiful. Um, we started by just playing the songs, playing the music and playing the show, and then we made a record. And then we went out on tour and we learned how to play the songs <laughs> after we recorded them already. But um, it was an extraordinary experience. We played you know, the great uh, venues of the, of the United States and, uh, and uh, Europe and, and Australia. And uh, the music and the material, the writing really held up. And these musicians are, are super powerful. And they're, to get these three on a stage and just to play this extraordinary music was a, was a, a real event. People did not see this one coming because you think it's going to be kind of a, we played a lot of classical venues and people thought it was going to be kind of, you know, situational and like the kind of people buy a package and they're going to see a kind of a show. And our show would come and be extremely entertaining and joyous and uh, and very approachable. And uh, it was a kick every night to go out there and and knock them out with the stuff we were doing. Yeah, Jan, to build. Yeah, Jan, Jan, to build. I mean, you guys are all powerhouses when it comes to the music industry. I mean, you in particular, you've worked with renowned conductors, internationally acclaimed orchestras all over the world. How did you meet up with Bill Murray? I mean, how did you guys basically get together? <laughs> I heard you met him at an airport. Yeah, we met in an airport and became friends. And um, sometime I was at a movie theater and I, uh, with my kids and saw The Jungle Book and heard Bill sing, Baloo the Bear, and it was beautiful. And then a couple of weeks later, he invited me to a poetry walk here in New York City and I heard him recite a Walt Whitman poem and I thought, okay, we know he's a great actor. He can sing wonderfully and he can recite the poetry like no one else. So I thought I can play the cello and can get a violinist and the pianist and then maybe we can do a show. And I sent him a text message and his reply was, um, I would love that. And so so we created this show and it's been a really jo real joy to go around the world from Carnegie Hall to Sydney Opera House. and especially the Greek concert was very memorable because the Herodes Atticus is an amphitheater so old and has so much history that we really felt we had to live up to it. And I think we, we kind of survived it well and are very happy that it's not on, on, on screen and I think people will enjoy it. Uh, Bill, did you always want to get involved in music or was this something you sort of learned about yourself later in your life and you're like, let's do this? Well, I never had the dream to play the Acropolis Baker, but um, <laughs> I, I was always I could always sing. I sang with a band when I was in high school, and you know I I like a lot of us sing in the shower. And the last few years, I've gotten the chance to sing uh, not just as Blue the Bear, but as Garfield the Cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. A musical show with uh, Sofia Coppola and a bunch of wonderful entertainers a few years ago, and then it just kept coming and. Uh, when this opportunity to play with Jan and Mira and Vanessa came along, I thought, well, how bad can I be with these people behind me? You know, so I took, uh, it was, I made the right choice. I, it was an ex one of the great experiences of my life. Uh, Jan, what difficulties went into taking you and Bill's album and then transforming it for the tour here? Were there any sort of difficulties to get this done here? 
No, it was very organic. The, the CD is more like an, some album leaves of wonderful pieces we were imagining. And then the two is stitched it all together. And there also Bill could help so much because his, his dramatic sense and the experience from the movie to really build tension and surprise people. And then we built a real show. So this is not like music with some poetry reading or something. It's re a real show and it has popular music in it. It has tunes from all kinds of cultures from South America, from America, from Europe. And it's really became something that has an, had an arch and had a, a kind of a drama in it and really excites people. So we really developed naturally. And even when we taped this after about 40 shows then uh, in Athens, I think we came to this point where we thought, yeah, it's time now to to record it. And and we had, didn't have any retakes and we took this show as it is and there's nothing is repeated or anything. It's just the way that people saw it in Athens. Well, based off of all of this, I mean, do you, is, is there plans to make more music from the two of you based on the success of how much you guys clearly enjoyed this? Do you guys want to make more music together down the road? Well, Jan has never has yet to become a movie star, and if that works out, <laughs> in due time, he starts to behave like one. You know, then I would be involved with him again on another project. <laughs> what about you, Jan? You want to do this again? Or are you done well, with Hale after this? We had a great time and inspired me greatly uh, for my work. And I must say, I'm a different person now when I'm on stage with with my cello and playing classical music. And I, I would be up for it, but I think it has to evolve again. It, it comes, always the friendship comes first, and the inspiration comes first, and um, then um, maybe another project will be born. Well, I can't wait for that. And by the way, your documentary, guys, it comes out on Groundhog's Day. And did you know we're less than a month from the 29th anniversary bill of your iconic Groundhog's Day movie? I mean, it's almost 30 years old, which is crazy. Does it ever get old when one of your films finds sort of a permanent place in pop culture history like Groundhog's Day has? Well, I think what you're trying to say, Baker, is it seems like only yesterday. <laughs> it does. It does. It feels like it's yesterday. <laughs> uh, I'm very, you know, you're, I don't know if you're supposed to be proud of your films, but I'm very fortunate to be associated with that one. It's one of the greatest screenplays I've ever written. A fellow named Danny Rubin wrote it, and Harold Ramis kicked into it. And it's a, it's an, there's Annie McDowell's face, and she was a doll, and um, uh, and that guy, Phil, that <laughs> character. I got bit by the groundhog who was our set groundhog twice. He bit me right there. Oh on my that God. Thing. But it was a great experience to make that film. I'm really happy. He, this you know, he's it's awesome. amazing. He's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> and so, it was great to make the movie. Uh, it's great that it lives like it it does. It's in the National Register. It's a uh, it shows and it shows all day long on February second. So that can make you even more confused. Like you don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I, Bill, I feel like we're all been sort of collectively living in our own Groundhog's Day for two years now. But have you ever thought of an, of another film that maybe you've done and you've thought, why didn't this one become a bigger hit or become sort of this zeitgeist in in pop culture history because of that? Well, I don't know if 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 what that is. I mean, I made Ghostbusters, which was a big movie, and I made some other movies that were pretty good. I was in Tootsie. You know, there are some other movies I've, that I've made that have, that have a long life and will live a long time. Um, did I, I, I don't exactly sure what the question is, Baker. Is the question is, do I deserve any of that? No. Do I, am I lucky to be involved with those? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Could I have foreseen that those would happen like this? Well, I thought some of, I knew some of them were gonna be really good. And I knew that when I read Groundhog Day, for example, that it was one of the great pieces of writing and that if we could only get it right, sort of like this show that we do, if you could only live up to the material somehow that you would really get across to people, people would really appreciate it, really enjoy it and leave with something. No, that makes total sense, Bill. Uh, one other thing I think a lot of your fans love about you is when you take photos with them on the street and sort of the stories that sort of are accompanied with it. Uh, there's a whole website, Bill, I don't know if you know this, called BillMurrayStory.com. It's all dedicated to all the encounters you have with fans. Uh, we know a lot of celebs try to avoid this at all costs. How are these so much fun for you? Like when somebody comes and asks for a selfie with you, do you enjoy that? Well, not always, I'm, uh, not always. It's just like you're the same percentages we all have, you know? Certain number of people are just wonderful. Certain number of people just sort of aren't even there. And there's just a handful of people that are really difficult, really, really difficult. 
So the ones you're hearing about are usually the people that are just wonderful, that enjoy the experience, that make, that bring themselves to it. You know, they're not, they aren't just laying it on you to, hey, hey, stand still, stay, hey, stand still. That kind of, <laughs> you know, it doesn't work that well, you know. But if someone comes in, it's, they are there, you know, then, then you have an opportunity to have like a greater thing happen than either of the individual. And that's kind of what, if when it's good, it's great. When it's bad, it's like everyone else is bad. It's not great. <laughs> well, I have, we, I have like a million I wanted to read, but I only have time for one. I want to read you one encounter, and I want you to tell me if this happened, Bill. Because in 2010, one tourist claims in Times Square they bought some French fries from a nearby McDonald's when you took a few of his fries away from him. You walked away, and you said to him, no one will ever believe you, and you continued just to walk on with his French fries. <laughs> Did that really happen? <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that, Baker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can read a thousand of these, Bill. These are all so amazing. Uh, Bill, such a pleasure to have you here. Such a pleasure to have Jan here as well. All right, guys, congratulations on all the success. That's Bill Murray and world-renowned cellist Jan Vogler. The new film, New Worlds, The Cradle of Civilization, will be released on February the 2nd in select theaters nationwide.